tell me how you how you make sure the head restraint is correct adjusted so it provides the best protection in the event of a crash okay so the answer is the head restraint should be adjusted so the rigid part of the head restraint is at least as high as the eyes or top of the ears and as close to the back of the head as comfortable no, some restraints might not be adjustable. Okay, I've deliberately got this one down to show you this. On this car, like taking a throw in, and most cars it is, you go a bit like that, you put it up, and you can now see that that is my ears are in this bit here. The other way to test is put your hand at the back of your head, the bit that sticks out, put it back, and if your hand hits the headrest, your back of your head would hit the headrest, and then you're fine. But that's a basically where it is now. So, open the bonnet, identify what the brake fluid reservoir is and tell me how you would check that you have a safe level of hydraulic brake fluid. Um, the answer is identify the reservoir, check level against high-low markings. Okay, I know that some cars don't have a high-low marking. This one does, but it's very difficult to see. Um, if they don't have a high, high, and, high and low marking, then you have to um, wait for the light to come on or take the cap off and have a look. Um, have a look at the handbook for that. Again, your instructor will tell you on each individual car, but may or may not have an ident a high and low, but you would just say, check against high and low. Remember, you're not showing them, you're telling them, but you would have the bonnet open. So you have to say, oh, that's the, um, that's the um, reservoir over there, and you check against the high and low, or a light comes on the dashboard. Again, you'd need to check that with your instructor, I'm afraid. Okay, tell me how you would check the tyres to ensure that they have sufficient tread depth and that their general condition is safe for use on the road. The answer is no cuts or bulges, 1.6 millimetre of tread depth across the central three quarters, the breadth of the tyre, and around the entire outer circumference. Okay, I'll show you, again, I'll show you a picture of this. Um, but basically, it's got to be 1.6 mil, which you'd need a gauge for, and it's for three quarters of the width of the tyre. So the tyre's that, that wide, it's for that bit, if that makes sense, for the central three quarters, and all the way around the tyre. Okay, also, you know, check the... Um, the the spare. Remember this is a tell me, not me, show, show me, so you literally tell them this. Um, also, on most tyres, there's a, I think on all of them actually, there's a little bulge within the tread, and if that bulge is level with the top of the tyre, then you're on the 1.6mm, that little bulge is the 1.6mm, and if I can get a picture of it, then I'll, I'll stick a picture up here of that too. Okay. Next question, show me how you would check that the horn is working off-road only. Check is carried out by using, using by using control, in other words, using the horn, turn ignition if necessary. So on this car, turn ignition, I give the horn a bib. Have a look around, which I'm not going to like that. Okay, so you can do that, but you must be off road. So if it's a test centre that you park on the road, then you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. Um, that is a show me. So if if they have if they can't do it, they wouldn't ask you that question. Show me how you would clean the windscreen using windscreen washer and wipers. Okay. Operate control to wash or wipe windscreen, turn ignition on if necessary. So again, all cars are different. Um, you turn the ignition on in this car, at the end of the windscreen wiper controls is a button, you press that in and that cleans the windscreen and does four or five washes, you can hear it, you can't see it. But again, you need to just check with your instructor because that is, that is a show me. Um, tell me how you would check the headlights, this is a tell me, tell me how you would check the headlights and tail lights are working, no need to exit the vehicle. So otherwise you're just going to tell them this answer, you're not going to show them. I used to show them this one, but there was lots of cars that had lights out and they couldn't conduct the test then, so they, I think they just decided to tell them instead. Um, so you would say, operate switch, turn ignition if necessary. Then to operate the switch would be the switch for the lights. All cars are different, so on this car it's on the right hand side, twist it across. Again, you would get your instructor to show you that. Um, walk around the vehicle as if it was a tell me question there is no need to physically check the lights. So what you're saying is, I would turn them on, put the ignition on if necessary, I'd walk around the vehicle and check them, make sure they're okay. You would tell them that, not do them that. It's quite important, that bit, okay? So you would tell them what you would do, you wouldn't actually do it. A bit confusing, I know, but they've changed the rules on that. Okay, show me how you would set the demister controls to clear the windscreen efficiently. This should include both front and rear screens, okay? So you would say so it's a show me, so you would literally do it basically. So on this car you've got some dials, again a picture will pop up now of that. So you would turn the demister up, you would put it onto the windscreen like that, and to do the back one you would press, which is normally a square with little wiggly lines going up it, and you would press that and that would demist the back. But 
um, remember you are going to show them that. So the actual answer is set of relevant controls including fan, temperature, air direction, source and heat screen to the windscreen and windows and it does not have to be started for this demonstration. You actually have to do it what you just to show them. Hopefully your instructor will already set all that up before. I always set that up before a test so you don't demist anyway or don't miss up sorry. So you would just say I'd set them up as they are now and I would press this button here which is the demister button. Again get your instructor to show you. But remember how you would switch on the rear fog lights and explain when you would use them. No need to exit the vehicle so show me how you would. Don't necessarily have to do it. Well it says operate the switch so show me how you would do it. So on this car you turn the lights on and then you pull the lever out. Okay, you have to turn the lights on first. Again, you would check. So operate switch, turn on dipped headlights and ignition if necessary. Check warning light is on, explain use. The explain use is you wouldn't use it unless the visibility was less than 100 meters, which is very, very foggy. Um, if you put them on when it's not that foggy, then you could call confusion to other vehicles. They could think you're braking because some cars, they are the brake lights as well. Okay, tell me how you would know if there was a problem with your anti lock braking system um, the answer is warning light should eliminate eliminate illuminate if there is a fault with the anti-lock braking system so a light would come on that says ABS if you click the ignition just to the setting just before you start you should all the warning lights could come on should come on to show you they're working and the one says ABS is a circle with half circles on either side um, and it says ABS if that's on when you're driving you must stop the vehicle because your ABS might not work next question show me how you switch the headlights and dipped main beams to explain how you would know that the main beam is on while inside the car. So you operate the switch, ignition or engine on, check the main beam warning light. So again, it's not a get out of the vehicle job. So you put the lights on, main beam on this car is pull the lever away from you and a blue light comes on the dashboard. A blue light with straight lights coming out of it. The dip beam is a green light with lines going down. The blue is out and that's how you would know you put them on and say the blue lights come on so I know they're on. So hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, the list is below. It's taken off the DSA site so it's their list but we've put it on there so you can see it. It's done in such a way that it's done in the category so you'll see the same questions come up twice. I've just gone through the questions once here. Um, as always any questions contact me and I will go through them for you. Thank you.